Hi everyone, now what I'm doing here is untying some uh, green peters. This is just a red arse green peter. Uh, tie size 10, size 12, so two main sizes that I would tie. Uh, I'm going to be tying a size, in this case a size 10. Now this is on a, a medium wire hook, it's the all-purpose medium from Fooling Mill. Thread I'm going to be using, I'm actually going to use a red thread. So quickly run the thread. Well, the wax through the thread, sorry. You start at the eye of the hook. Just the thread on, remove the waist, but on the way down, and you tie in a small, this is a, an oval gold tinsel. Just work your way down, nice and tight. I'm going to slightly come round the bend, just slightly, and by the, the barb of the hook. And I'm going to come up a couple of turns. Now, the colour combination I'm using is one of tie for a friend in Ireland, so there's many greens in the body of the green peter. Uh, the colour I'm going to be using is this like bottle light green. It's a mix of dark green and, and bottle, or insect green if you want to call it. Uh, it's a nice colour, and it's a colour that I know fishes really well. This is uh, red seals for and red SLF blended together. SLF is a synthetic living fibre from, uh, I think it's Wopsy to do it now. It was a Davy Watton uh, dubbing, a well known tyre from Wales, who uh, now lives in, in America. Anyway, we'll, we'll do the, the red, as we call it, the red arse at the back, or at least the red tag. Don't be shy with it, I like to put a good tag on it. So when you're happy, you want a good couple of mils worth. That's fine. And then get our, our green. In this case, I mean, after, as I say, I've tied this quite a few different colours of green in the body from a basic light, light olive through to a, a sooty olive, which is really dark green. This is like a, an inset green, dark olive mix. Just dub it on. Just a nice, reasonable body. Give yourself, we've got a wing and we've got a body hackle and a front hackle to put on this. And I am just using a, just a basic, this is just a cheap Indian uh, furnace neck that I've had for, I mean, I've got a few of these, I've had for many years. Is this now? This is a wet fly. So it's a. Uh, it's not really overdressed in a way, it's not going to, it will kind of stay close to the surface. Now what I've done here is obviously trimmed away the waist, left enough of the, the, the stem to tie it on. Here there's wax in my thread. It's not the best marked, it's got a nice bit of black in the bottom and then a nice natural red. Length of the fibre is entirely up to yourself. They say I'm going to, this is uh, more of a wet fly, so it's quite sparse. Now I'm just going to come round with a turn at the back of the, the tag, come over, catch a hackle, just on top. Now there's about maybe three, four turns down the body, come up into five turns with the rib. Just before we tie it off, draw back anything that's going forward, bring it up, catch it in nice and tight. I'm going to trim away the tip here. Trim away uh, the rib. Again, a wee bit of wax. Just roll this back with my fingers. Now I could double the wing on this as when you tie a green peter. Uh, you can do a double wing, so what well, I may do, I may do that. So what I've got here is a, this is a secondary feather from a hen pheasant. Now there's a soft side, soft in colour, and it curls sort of away from the feather at the tip. Whereas this side, the real marked side, it kind of naturally comes in. So that's going to be the, this is going to be the inside and this is going to be the outside. So I'm taking a slip from either side. So I'm just going to lay it on my desk. It's basically you represent the uh, green peter as a caddis fly, and they've got that really quite a pronounced a wing that you certainly it's quite heavy, 
this helps to give that impression so now that's one side this is the other side now you need a soft from one either your double it's just a double wing so we're doing the same again so we first off we get the soft fibre on the softer side just lay them together so what we do is just bring them together we're right and we're left just going to bring it down a wee bit you'll see how they're going to curl away when you tie it in it will curl uh, slightly away from the body now you just buy the bend of the hook here right on top sometimes just do it Tie it in first, or just do a couple of pinching loops. See how the wing's sitting. Because at this point, you can actually move it around. Uh, I want it to, I want it to be a bit better than that. Here we are. That's it. So it's starting to open out a wee bit better. So we're back in, do my pinching loop, nice and tight. With a couple of turns. See how it's sitting. Can I check my length? You don't have to be too fussy, I mean you see how it naturally curls away from the, the hook shank. I've pulled down a fibre on your side as you can see, but that's not going to do much, so I'm just going to leave that. So I'm going to trim it away. And just a wee quick run down back up to tie in my main wing. So we'll get the, the best marked fibre, the natural, natural colour. Now just checking the width of the fibre too much. So I'm just taking off one side here. Now what I'm going to do is just, even you see the underside of the wing, you have the right and the left side. Just going to line up the tips here, pull it. See how they're going to sit, that's fine. Then what we're going to do is make sure, position the back as good as the, the front where you want it to sit. It goes on the top, and we just fold them down either side. Do a pinching loop on top, nice and controlled turns. Just feel that loop coming through your fingers. Do that twice. How does it look? I still do it. Once you start to fish this, it'll look better. I'm just going to get my finer scissors. I just I want a neater cut here. I say wax your thread, get these cut ends nice and tight. I've travelled down a wee bit further here, but I'm just coming up a wee bit. See how the wing's sitting. It will lower it slightly by doing that. There we are, see that? Uh, single fibre now. I don't know if you can see it. it's on your side. Right there it's there. It's just come down with a, th a thread turn. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to take it out. Uh, just you can pull out a pair of tweezers, or you can trim it away. Just come in, trim that away. There we go. Now for the front, I'm going to be using the same hackle, this furnace hackle, but a slightly bigger fibre. Now I'm going to what I'm going to do here. The best marked fibres near the tip, as you can see. So I'm going to tie it in at the tip. Which is unusual for a cock hackle because normally you would be tying the only hen hackles you do that with basically you would tie these in further down but when you've got the best mark fibre near the tip that's where you want to tie it in so we trim away and leave enough to tie it on wax is on you need the wax so it's just going to give you the grip when you're winding down Now I'm going to use my scissors the back of the side of my, the blade just to fold the hackle. It'll sit much better for you if you do that. So one turn in front of the other. Just take your time. Nice straight turns. And what I'm doing here is when I'm letting go, I'm pinching the sides of the thread, the, the, the hook and holding the, the hackle. So if I come round, just to get an idea, come round, and you change over hand slightly, and you come by the thread, and then work my way down, so I then pinch again nice and tight, 
and I keep doing that, working my way down. And don't be shy with the hackle. Now I'm happy with that, so I'll follow up with the thread by a 90 degree bend in. Nice and tight. Now, the stem of this is quite thin, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fold it back, so I'm going to tuck it back, and then just focus on building up a nice wee head with the thread. When you're happy with that, now I usually just break it off if I can. It's quite a chuck. There we go. That's it. And then we can hit finish. Now normally the hackle breaks a bit quicker than that, but it was a wee bit of chuck, as they say in Scotland. And there we go. It's a green Peter. A nice kind of wing. Once you start to use that, the double wing comes into play a wee bit better. But as I say, this is more a wet fly than a than a dry fly. But whilst you can keep it close to the surface if you want. And there we are. All I've got to do is a wee bit of varnish onto the head. All the way around. You can see how it tidies up. And tying in these hackles by the tips, got a nice thin stem. And it covers really well. You get nice and neat. And there we are. See how the wing the wing's sitting nice. Very caddis like. Uh, you've got your under wing there, supporting your main wing. Just sits nice, you've got a lovely shape in the hackle. Uh, so there we are, that's the that's green Peter. Nice fly as I say. And, uh, and it is a wet fly, this version. And if you want to obviously make it into dry, you've obviously got to use a sh shorter hackle near the front. Uh, maybe stiffen up. Again, with a shorter hackle in the body, but overall, that's just a standard sort of wet fly uh, you would fish as a green peter. It's a nice pattern. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, and thank you for watching.